Good afternoon, Paradoxians, and welcome to yet another episode of Paradox Live. I'm your host, John, as usual, uh, and today we're going to talk about Warlock 2. Yay! So with me, I have Gibbon, the producer for the game, Jürgen, uh, who's joining me here today to talk about the new and upcoming expansion, Wrath of Nargus, that we announced. Wrath of the Nargus. Wrath of the Nargus. Very specific Nargus. Yes. They're very basic. Actually, are there different Nargus that are like, could we expect Wrath of the other Nargus in the future? Uh, not that we know of. Okay, not that we know of. <laughs> as far as Ordania knows, these are the only targets. <laughs> Alright, so, an expansion or a DLC, uh, depending on how we're phrasing it, but an expansion to the game nevertheless. Mm -hmm. I think the terminology there is a bit odd anyways. Um, sometimes announced... it's hard to tell. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to tell, but it's definitely an addition to the game uh, that we announced Indeed. yesterday. So we're going to go through the new features yeah. and gameplay additions to uh, to Warlock that this is going to add. So before, because some of you, some of our viewers might not even know about Warlock, we're just going to go through what the game is in short. So Jürgen, just like elevator pitch, what is Warlock 2? Fantasy strategy war game, classical hex based, no dispute, only war, diplomatic victory is not an option. 4x. 4x. Uh, we we use the term we use the term 4x a lot for the first game, but we figured that fantasy fantasy war game is a better term okay. because the game is heavily focused on the extermination part oh, of true. the 4x's. You do explore, you do expand, you do exploit, but mostly you exterminate. Okay. Th this is this is 80% war game. I like that. Uh, you had a very good definition, though. It's like taking everything the game is and just putting it in like this mm -hmm. ten-word sentence. That's nice. So, basically, you build bases, you build armies, you level up, you walk around, you explore different dimensions of Ardania. Mm -hmm. It's hex-based. Uh, there's turns. There's turns. Things. There's turns. Um, in the in the vanilla game, we now have three different game modes. We have the classical sandbox kind of one big map uh, where you explore and just eliminate everything with Different, different couple of winning conditions. The biggest thing we added for uh, for Warlock 2 was the exile mode, which is a way of using the alternate planes you had in the first game um, to get a kind of get a clearer. Oh my God, my English is failing. Like me. progression, story speak. progression thing. Kind of yes. Instead of just being on this one big world, you have to walk through several smaller shards. Um, you can't just stay in one place. You need to progress further and further. And uh, the further you progress through this net of smaller worlds, the more dangerous the environment gets, the harder the mobs are, so to speak. Because you need to get to the final world to kill the lieutenants of the United One and retake your place as ruler of Ardania. I was gonna draw a parallel to Oregon Trail, but it kind of drifted off there in the <laughs> end. <laughs> but nevertheless, it's more of a journey, so yes, you have to think it's, differently. It's more of a journey. Because and uh, the third game mode is called Battle for the Outplanes. It's played in the same kind of world, world web, a web of worlds, if you will, structure, but without the story parts and scripted quests for, All right. uh, for the exile. So it's more of a sandbox net world, okay. net world mode, which gives you. Uh, which gives you pretty nice replayability. Uh, play however you want. Although this is one of those games that you can play just forever because there are so many options and paths to go and yes. portals everywhere. And it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, I can barely get past the starting worlds, but it feels like, you know, <laughs> every time I die, I get killed by something different. And that's nice. <laughs> so, moving into the actual expansion, Wrath of the Nagas. Yes. Uh, we're adding mainly a new race called the Nagas. Yes. What are they about? Uh, for those of you who are familiar with with um, previous Majesty games, the Nagas and the Gorgons and the Harpies, um, they're they're part of an old uh, part of an old. Uh, they have been active in Ardania for a long time, but slowly drifted out after the Great War sometime before Majesty won. So what's happening in Wrath of the Nagas is that somehow uh, the Naga the Naga race, aided by these Gorgons and the Harpies previously from Ardania have broken through, uh, broken through from their reality into ours, not ours, sorry, into the Ardanian reality. It's not the same reality. <laughs> um, and are trying to take over by slowly drowning the world in the water that they are very comfortable with, that they most Ardanian are creatures are not. Hmm. So gameplay-wise this means amphibious creatures, uh, resilient lizard-based units, 
and also that you build, as the Naga race, you build your cities on water, which is a significant change uh, from the pre-existing races. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and it also means a lot of terraforming, both for you as the Naga player and for you as opposed to uh, the, the Nagas. All right. So, I mean, you, you kind of drifted into that. So, like, taking into, so if you're a competitive or more active World Cup <coughs> player, this is, of course, going to add new dynamics and in how Indeed. they interact with the other races. So, one of the main things is that when you create a new Naga city, it will actually terraform the, the squares, the hexes around it, into water. And yeah. it will continuously grow outwards. Yes, you need to start, you need to start uh, in a water hex. And then there's some, the city itself generates some terraforming okay but to further progress you need to build specific buildings that keep terraforming all right uh, the water because your goal is to drown everyone out also most of your naga units they are amphibious but they're more powerful in the water all right uh, but to to like use the full power of the nagas plus the plus the the gorgon and harpy allies you should always keep some lands because harpies they're land based you need one land hex to build uh, their, their building zone and so on. Although, to be honest, also you're going to have some land because if you play against players, they're yes. going to be actively opposing the, yes. the outreach of your water. Very much so. But it's kind of like a blight functionality here. It's just growing outwards and Indeed. taking over that. Indeed. So there's a, a story progression thing to the multiplayer too, yeah. which is nice. It kind of ties into the <laughs> lore. Uh, but they also add in more gameplay elements. I mean, we've added new resource, we've added new, uh, new unit types. Mm -hmm. So. So just going a bit more in depth, like what new strategical options do they do they add to the game beyond the, the whole water factor? <coughs> we add, together with the new race, we add a new game mode, uh, or a new campaign-ish called the Clear Threat, which is based around the fact that they are invading. So what you as a player have to do is to fight the constant rising tide. The Nagas will spawn. The Nagas will spawn Naga fountains. These fountains will keep terraforming the world around you. So you need to um, you need to both stop their terraforming and progress towards uh, towards their the Naga boss. All right. And is this something you can play in multiplayer too, or is this only a single player campaign? No, this is you can play it in multiplayer as well with okay. either uh, in the same way you can play the existing game modes either with shared victory or an alliance or against other computers as well so there's the same kind of modality if that's a word uh, in this as in the original that's original great no, game it's also. more open then. um and you can play as nagas against nagas as well so can you no play as the invading nagas no no so you can only you can play as the the um the person being oppressed by the watery beings yes uh yes which means that if you play this campaign as the Nagas, it kind of it's much easier since you are the, yeah, not water, as threatened yeah. That's true, actually, by, yeah. by the land, uh, by the rising tide. You would actually want the rising tide, kind of. Kind of, but kind you of. also lose if they take over. Oh, okay. So it's so you can't a delicate just, balance. You can't there. just play as the Nagas and then wait it out. Oh, okay. Um, so with the whole new map, I mean, of mm. course, there's a lot more interaction on water. Water was previously kind of this thing you wanted to terraform away with evil krakens and uh, serpent lords and loot and stuff, but not that much. But now we've added a lot of new water resources and things specifically for the Nagas. Do we have any examples on just new map dynamics? Uh, yes, we both added um, the same way as we have uh, land types like uh, uh, snowy land, is better for production. We have the same kind of things for water. Blooming water uh, helps you uh, with, it raises the amount of food from that hex and so on. So we have water types that mostly concerns the Naga since they're the only ones who have buildings yeah. uh, in water uh, or built their cities on water. We've also added a couple of water-based resources similar to resources uh, like uh, iron mine or gem mine. Uh, stuff like fish farms, um, fish pools, and uh, pearl thingies where pearls grow, <laughs> I forget the name. Like oysters, or do pearls grow freeform in, in Ardania? Uh, I haven't okay. studied Ardanian bio biology that much, All right. but these resources, are, these resources are usable for every race, um, and every race has, has the opportunity to build, build um, 
resource specific buildings on them even if they're not nagas all right we've also patched these these changes into the base game so even if you don't want to buy the nagas which you should uh, you can still use the water-based resources all right so that means like building a city next to water might not be equally much of a waste now because you might have good water-based exactly, resources exactly. there exactly instead of having four water hexes that are just useless to you there might as be there might be at least one that you can actually use for fish farming or good new dynamic. dynamic. Yeah. I like that building on what we have. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also added a few new mages. Yes, there are two two new mages for the Nagas. They're called one is the Gorgon Sfino. Uh, her story is that she uh, she yeah well she's fighting for mostly herself. Uh, she's a Gorgon, so she's not Naga born. Okay. Um, it's a great mage that comes with a couple of new perks. Her main perk is. Uh, is the internationalist perk which removes uh, in the base game you get a penalty if you take over a city from another race you can still use it but it will constantly produce 25 percent less of food uh, and money and mana and so on all right that is not a thing if you play as gorgon sfino because she includes everyone well, she's a nice person she has a lot of heads too like a lot uh, of snakes a lot of snakes yeah snakes. do they all have different personalities uh, I do not know. I haven't talked to her. She's All right. only made up. <laughs> so I, I think you need to read more a bit, a bit more about the lore because it's Ardania. It's like it's <laughs> exactly. our universe. Weirdly yeah. enough, we have so many games tied into Ardania. We do. So we this do. we should write a book about it. Do we have any books about it? Uh, there's a warlock book. There really is. Uh, there's a warlock ebook. Ah, huh, cool. What's Ava it called? Available now. Oh God, I can't remember. The Great Mage Game. It's called the Great Mage Game. Available on Steam. Um, but she's uh, the Sfino is a very good choice if you like to incorporate other cities from other races into your empire. If you want to play it, if you want to play it clean, right, just yeah. with the race you're using. Um, and there seem to be there seem to be two two camps on this. All right. Either you want to play pure, or you think it's fun to include everyone. And if you want to play po pure, you should go with the other new great mage, the Naga General Ringaruk. His main perk is the uh, is the intolerance perk. You get extra you get extra minus if you're including anyone else, but you get plus if you play it. Oh, play right. Pure, just just as the Nagas. Interesting. So there's actually, I mean, you can for once again for players or people that haven't played Warlock, mm -hmm. there are a lot of diplomatic I keep options too. I keep forgetting there are players yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, so you you can kind of play a more diplomatic role too and kind of try to navigate your way through the the great mages without provoking too much. How does that work? Well, no, you need to... You can form alliances, but alliances are made to be broken. True. If you want to win, keep them as puppets and annihilate them as soon so as possible. Build their trust and then just get really close and suddenly, oh, you've yes. taken their bases. Yes. Uh, we've... The re one of the reasons we call it a, a war game is that for if if you call it a pure four X game, people tend to think tend to interpret the the diplomatic system in Warlock as a bit not as deep. Yeah. And it's not as deep as in civilization. But that's the way we want it. Yeah. You should use it to to have smaller smaller pockets of peace, but the alliances will be broken, either by you or the AI pretty soon. Someone's gonna die. Someone's gonna die. Oh well, that's nice. It's it's a exterminate game. I like that. Um, all right. So, uh, so, do you have any new traits that you can use for the mages beyond these tolerant and intolerant that you kind of, you know, can experiment with other mages, new spells, <coughs> anything in that category? Th those are the big ones. We of course we've added uh, we've added two new hero units, uh, the Ace Harpy, which is a super harpy. She flies. She's good at scouting. She's also pretty vicious in a fight, but she's mainly a fast scouting unit. Uh, and the Secret Physician. One of the story things about Nagas is that they don't use magic in the same sense as uh, their magic is based to an Ardanian. It doesn't seem like they use magic. All right. They use some kind of science instead, which makes them very weird to the rest of Ardania. So she's a healer unit, pretty powerful healer unit that is good to keep in the baseline of your troops, like assisting them. Um, and these are also, these two heroes, they're also available uh, in the base game. You can encounter them as heroes, even if you didn't buy the expansion. Oh, okay. So what you buy, what you get, if you buy the expansion, is the possibility to choose them, 
choose to start with okay. as a starting perk. Uh, there's a couple of spells, uh, spells added, nothing groundbreaking there, a little bit of terraforming, um, but the most most important things are uh, the new race, which is, let's see if I remember correctly, I think it's 16 new units and 24 new buildings. Uh, so just as big and just as powerful as any of the existing All races. Right, so they're definitely going to be competitive. It's not like just some kind of fluff race without it later no, no. on. It's, it's definitely they, a full-out competitor. Yes, to, indeed. To the and they play, play. Very, they play significantly different from... Yeah, I noticed. I, I sat down and played just before the stream, mm -hmm. and I was wading around in water, and I was trolling land units. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine a lot of your <laughs> players are going to be annoyed when they accidentally <laughs> boat their troops. Yes. And yes. suddenly, the, the, the transition between land and water might not be as nice for them as for the Naga. So it's, no, it's no. definitely a very interesting race to play, especially for someone that's kind of dug into Warlock 1 and 2 and want new dynamics to the game. Indeed, indeed. It's, it's the, cl the closest thing... This is probably... For those of you who played Warlock 1 and played the Armageddon mode, this is something like this. You're not only bat battling an opponent, but also a constant terraforming, terraforming thing. Yeah. All right. Uh, is there anything you feel we missed? I think we've gone through a lot of the aspects. As you can see, Matt's currently playing. I didn't actually notice he was showing off, so you can see kind of <laughs> how the the Nagas play right now, hmm? um, or Nagas, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, there's no standard. Pronounce it how you want. I'm not one thousand. Nagas. Sure. Nagas. <laughs> no, I would just. Uh, this is. For for those who played, for, for those who played through a lot of Warlock Two, mm -hmm. for other people as well, of course, this is a great addition that brings that brings something new both uh, both in multiplayer, and uh, in single player, as the uh, story clear threat campaign is very different from what's currently there. And for those who who are scrubs like I am, it might give you a fighting chance in the first twenty minutes of the game. And you might not lose before you've actually started playing properly. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. I might actually finish a ground world. Like, seriously, I, I never do this. I just get demolished every time. <laughs> Maybe you should start playing on easier difficulty levels. No, but I'm playing at like normal or subnormal. It, it shouldn't be. Is it that hard on normal? It's it's really difficult. There's like I, I encountered this life stealing wolf thing oh, on yeah. the second world. That had like infinite HP and could one shot anyone. Like how <laughs> how do you deal with that? <laughs> oh, Nagas, because I can hide oh, in the water. Exactly. Right, I know what I'm gonna do after the stream. But then you only have to worry about krakens and sea serpents and stuff and like flying that. Flying units. And, uh, that is totally yeah, totally okay. doable. <laughs> totally doable. <laughs> All right. So, um, release date and pricing haven't been announced yet, but no, they're going to be in a, in a in a not too distant future. In a not too distant future. Uh, so keep your eyes open for that if you're interested in hearing more about Wrath of the Nagas. Uh, it's going to be an eventually upcoming expansion slash DLC slash whatever you want to call it for Warlock Two. I would say expansion. It's I pretty would, big. Yeah, I'm going to say expansion too. Yeah. I like expansion. I think DLC is kind yeah. of a. I don't. I don't like the word. I like race, game mode, mages, heroes. Yeah, definitely expansion. Yeah. All right. Um, and if you have nothing further than this. I will have to thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Um, for all the viewers, uh, this has been it for today.